Uh, well, and then after that, something that also happened is that I, as you know, I love dancing and I used to dance like almost every single day. But during, during the pandemic, when we were like at home, I decided to like uh, start dancing every single day, but to like change my body because it used to be like far, yeah, a little bit like heavier. So I decided to like change my habits as well. I stopped like eating um, hamburgers and everything. And I started like dancing every single day in order to change. That's why I think that I changed a little bit on uh, my body. But now I, I, I totally like fail. I stopped doing it. And what else? I met new people, not online. I, let's say I met them before in person in, at the university, but I started like talking with them because of Facebook or Instagram. So that's all. And then after that, um, I started like practicing English with people from, from here, from the United States. And I think it helped me a lot. And because of that, I decided to like um, improve everything. And I get I got the job at the university as like the lab practice practitioner. And that's all. What about you? Can you confirm it, the audio? Okay. Well, uh, in these two past. These two last years, my life changed a lot. I can say, uh, and the, the same as you, <laughs> because of the pandemic, I decided to, I don't know, uh, spend time recording videos on TikTok, as you know, when <laughs> you saw my videos on, uh, on TikTok. And then uh, I also met uh, new people through that app and, um, well, um, yeah, what else could happen? Um, well, I, I did not like it to uh, go and run like visiting towns, but then I, I decided to do sightseeing, I guess is the word sightseeing. And um, well, I spending time with my family because you know, I used to live a lot uh, in San Miguel. And then I moved to Aramala Morazan, the place where, where my family lived. And uh, believe me that it was a great, great time with them. Then uh, when uh, we have to come back to the university, you know, then uh, I have to move again to San Miguel. But uh, uh, actually, <laughs> uh, I'm currently, you know, here in Switzerland. And uh, wow, what, amaz what an amazing place experience uh, here in uh, one uh, first uh, world country. Um, it's an amazing place. And uh, uh, I, I, admire, I admire you. <laughs> Believe me, this is a challenge because uh, uh, people speak uh, German uh, and, and French and also um, I don't know the other dialects, and uh, it's it's a challenge to communicate. I, I know English, but uh, no, not all the people speak in English. Yeah, and, uh, but but like I want, I just want to know. For example, you are like in that at that country. It's why you met people during quarantine, or because you already like had friends yeah. there before. Oh, oh no, uh, uh, on two thousand. Uh, 18 I went to Costa Rica and I, I made I some remember. friends yeah wow. I made some friends and now I'm here in uh, Switzerland and uh, yeah and uh, next time they are supposed to go to El Salvador I remember yeah. Yeah. and uh, yeah I, I cannot believe it also uh, that I'm here but it's it's an amazing place. Yeah, in my case, I, I as you know, I am like in another country as well, but I had to live here. It's like different because you are just visiting and then you know that you're going to come back to your mm -hmm. country with your family. In my case, I, it had been like really hard 
to like get used to this. I I like I love the city and everything, but it's not like the same. You want to like be in your country and everything. Yeah, I thought that I won't never say that, but yes, uh, I'm like homesick, homesick, missing, yeah, a lot. missing everything. I in my case, I don't know if that happens at, in your case, but in my case, I like when I am like alone at home, I start like crying or trying to remember, it. and I am like a little bit down because when I am sad, I start like watching my pictures and everything from the side so. It's like harder for me to to like okay. watch the photos. To okay, be honest, it happens once. Mm. No. Okay. <laughs> but can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. I'm sorry I got you up with the conversation. I know you were. You know that's something <laughs> that uh, obviously, as as I always say, and you are familiarized, and I think I said it at the beginning uh, of the course. Uh, it's so different when you talk to someone uh, like in front, you know, face to face rather than, hey, how are you? Then you send a message. And then the other person replies like 10 minutes later or two hours later and etc. And at least you know our culture is completely different from other people's culture. Like a couple of weeks ago that I was in America, I was in the US, sorry. Uh, I, I, I met my best friend, uh, who, is a, who is a male, and he got a new girlfriend. So he said, hey, we're going to have dinner with my girlfriend. So uh, I, met, I met her, and he asked me, I mean, she asked me, like, so I, I, I saw that you got engaged, and yeah, I say, and I explained the whole thing. So he asked me, like, so how's your relationship? And I said, how do you know like a normal relationship? You know, you send messages, you know, like how you're doing, you know, because that's the way we are. Our culture is like that. We care too much about our people. And she was surprised when I told her that my girlfriend would text me to check on me if I had already had lunch, for example. And she was like, do you do what? And I said, yeah, she texts me, you know, to check on me. And both of, both of us looked at me like, no, that's gross. I said, like, what? I mean, that's what normal couples do, you know, you text each other. Well, I think that's, that's yeah. the way we do, right? So, but then they, they told me, I oh, you know, uh, we, send messages and we reply like every eight hours or 10 hours. And I said, really, I mean, we don't do that. So every culture has different aspects of communication. And then I never realized, like for example, if that would be the case, I would have never dated an American. I mean, for sure, right? Because you know, our culture is not like that. Got it? So I'm, I'm glad that you are here. So right now, this is your task uh, because you had a conversation with your peers. So what I want you to do is to emphasize on three things, only three, that the other person shared with you. Don't ask the, other, don't ask the person again. <laughs> okay. Don't ask the person again. You just try to remember what the other person told you. Three things. <laughs> Three, only three. Do you have them? No? <laughs> Remember, uh, another aspect of communication also is being a listener, right? And, I mean, we were having conversation. And Giovanni and Alejandra are going to tell us two, two things that, 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 I mean, three things that they got uh, each other from these last two years. Who wants to start? Ladies first. Ladies first, yeah. We only have three boys. Yes. Your name is, I'm sorry. Ilda. 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 Yes. He told me that the family has what they are passed away. Okay. But so, we got to send so much. Okay. And she told me that her mom. <laughs> 
you know, sometimes uh, but when you stop on something, and you know, scholarship, and that's something that I learned, particularly in my case, I was rejected many times before I got my scholarship. So I applied to, I applied to the US, I applied to, um, to Europe, you know, there are opportunities, and I was rejected a couple of times. That was really bad. It's something different from your choice because it was your choice not to continue with the process. But you know, opportunity is small, right? So you just need to go and search it. Right? So if you want to get something. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a good scholarship. Uh, in my university, I, my university, I'm part of the selection committee. So then I know what the thing works. So if you need to have interviews, check essays, papers, and the TOEFL. Thanks for sharing. Any other person? I need two more. Uh, I was talking to Melissa, and she told me that she bought a boyfriend during the pandemic. <laughs> 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 Kind of. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Good. You're finding no new jobs? Sorry, mister. Could you repeat it again? Did you get a new job in the pandemic? I don't get it. To what? A did job. You a, did you get any new job? No. No, no new jobs. Okay. Fine. No. Okay, perfect. Good. More, one more person. Yes. And she told us that she's our and she also get a new job. She applied for a new job but she like Okay. You didn't like it. Okay, so just she got a new job. So you're out on a new Healthy, new plan. Like things came back to normal, and I didn't have a job. You try. At least you're trying. Some of us are not. Yeah, I started to work. Um, like I said, I was in that school, but then I started, and then I said when things were like the work, the lockdown was over, and I was thinking that was so sad. Okay. So what about Alejandra and Giovanni? Now is your time for speaking. Okay, okay. Uh, well, it was like good to know more about Giovanni. And he told me that during like, well, during the pandemic, he has started to like do TikToks every single day. He got, he got famous there. And um, what else? Oh, he told me that he like, um, had to return to her, to his like, a place that is at Ambala and he improved his English because he practiced with new friends during the pandemic online and uh, because of that like me and chatting with his friend and everything now he is in Germany and he told me that it has been difficult for him to like get used to the place and everything because like people speak like Germany obviously but he uses or he uh 
put into practice his English in that country and that it has been a, an amazing experience. And just that. Okay, thank you so much for sharing that about you, Giovanni. What did you learn from Alejandra? Okay, uh, first, uh, I can say that she also mentioned that I started uh, dancing and recording videos, <laughs> also TikTok, Alejandra. <laughs> And uh, she also made uh, some changes in her life, like uh, eating healthy. She mentioned that. And um, the thing, thing is that she started meeting new people, not online, but uh, I don't know, you didn't explain more about it, but yeah, meeting more people. And um, now she's recently, uh, she, she's uh, currently in USA and uh, she's homesick. She means her place, same, same as me, and that's it. Okay, but at least, you know, both of you, I mean, you know, being homesick is something natural. It, it's so natural. Has anyone other, has any other person have been out abroad? Yes, you have. How much time were you out, Gita? Almost a year. Where? I was in Amity, so... Oh, you were in Amity? Yes. Yeah. Ah, okay. So where were you in Amity? Uh, in Missouri. Okay, good, good. So, you know, being homesick is something, it's weird, because you go, and when you are over there, you are happy. You are excited that you're going to go. The first two weeks. Once that you are over there, yeah, like the first weeks, like, oh, I miss my family, I miss the food, you don't eat well, you don't, you don't uh, eat, you don't sleep well, so everything is out of control. Then you get used to, and then when you come back to El Salvador, you say, oh, I miss the United States. And then it's like a roller coaster of emotions. So, so I'm, I'm happy, at least both of you are over there, you are having new experiences, enjoy as much as you can. And if you are planning to come back to El Salvador, say hi to the people when you go, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so this would be the, 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 the first activity. And the other one is, and this is something personal, what have you learned in these two years and a half? What, what did you learn? Like in my case, um, I'm particularly, it's, it's many teach, it's many things about being a teacher. You know, as a teacher, you need to plan your life because you plan everything, right? And then you say, I'm gonna plan my class. I want to take control of everything because that's what teachers do. You want to plan and you create things. So in these last two weeks, two years, I have learned that it doesn't matter how hard you plan your life, there are things that won't be as you want. And sometimes you just need to take the risk of doing the things in the correct time. Not, not planning ahead your life or, or everything. Because life is short. And if you plan, probably you're not gonna get it, right? I'm not telling you don't plan the things. I'm not telling you that. I mean, that obviously it's good to have goals and plans. So in my particular case, because of my personality, that I wanted to have everything planned in advance. These two years, these last, these last two years have just shocked me. You know, like, it's good to plan, but you know, things can come and just enjoy as much as you can. Okay, particularly, that's what I learned not to be, as we say, Salvadorian clavado, you know, on, 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 on planning things ahead. So that's what I learned, particular. So what about you? What have you learned? Yep. Uh, well, personally, uh, like, as I told you personally, I have learned for two years before, I was really a bad student. Then with the pandemic, I just learned that I am really good at self talk or for example, this method. So I learned better if I am looking to things by myself. And something that I was like able to learn out is go to plan things, uh, like go to the clinic, 
besides the television show, uh, for me, it is really good to have things to plan ahead, to follow like list or follow the agenda. And to have everything in plan and just like check when I have done this and that. So basically, I think, and this is part of my full hour research, that, uh, for example, there are people that might learn just the, the sample thing face to face, but there are other people that learn better because they sell things by the, I'm oh, sorry, search things by the themselves. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. So it will be kind of like the opposite to me. <laughs> it's just to have a balanced life, right? No more, no less. Just a balance. Good. Any other person? Something that you've learned this, uh, this, this two, these last two years? Yes? sister the whole time the whole time and my sister and I are so different in personality and it was so hard so the only thing in, in which we could engage was that she was like cooking a uh, delicious food every single day so you know she, she also made tres leches too she tried to make she tried to make tres leches that's good okay good so uh, what about uh, Alejandra or Giovanni? Something you want to share about this specific issue? Something you learned uh, during these last two years and a, yeah, let's say two years? Okay, uh, well, in my case, um, I learned to like, well, I, uh, my family lost many members of the family. So since that, I start like, uh, like enjoying more my family and especially my, my mom that I was with her during like that period. And also I learned um, how to, to prepare flans 
in my case, it was not tres leches, it was plan. Um, what else? To cook some things because I am really bad at that and I don't like cooking, but I try at least to learn new things with my mom to prepare rellenos and everything. And also um, some strategies because I wanted to like, um, to get a, a job that was like teaching. So I started like learning um, some strategies or activities that I like took into account when I was like um, giving the classes. And what else? Just that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I don't know, Giovanni, if you wanna add something quickly? Okay, uh, what I can add is that, um, well, I just started to learn English because I like it, the language and not because I like to teach. But uh, during, during uh, these two last years, um, I had to take those subjects and uh, those encourage my, encourage my, like, uh, I can say that, yeah, those encourage me to, to, to learn more about the language and how to teach. And now, uh, yeah, I'm thinking about to become a teacher. Good. <laughs> You, 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 you want to be a teacher. It's a hard thing to do. And I think some, some who, who's currently teaching? Good. You're good at teaching. Ah, who is working uh, in, uh, as a customer service agent, call center agent? Two, three, four. Okay. Good. So people are working, but you need, you need money, right? <laughs> you need to survive. You need to you want to buy your, your own things, etc., right? So you need to find a way how to make your life uh, easier. So that's really good. Thanks for sharing. So this was our opening conversation uh, activity. Uh, practice a little bit. Um, also, as I said, remember one of the important things about communication is also being a good listener, right? So that's another thing to get to try to get the ideas to summarize. So that's what we uh, we try to do also in this activity. Something really simple, but also engaging, right? Uh, another, uh, one thing that I want to share with you also about speaking uh, is to get organized on how to speak. And one way to do so is by mind mapping. Have you ever done that? Mind mapping? Yeah, so what's mind mapping? Uh, okay, drawing circles to organize the topics. Okay, drawing circles to organize the topics. Okay, good. Somebody else would like to add something about about uh, Ilda's concept of mind mapping, which is correct. Basically, is is that I do not have anything else to add. But someone else who has had an experience of mind mapping, they can share about that. No? Have you used, uh, yes? Yeah, basically, uh, yes, yeah, so it was like making a map and just conveying the most important details about the document. Okay, perfect. And it is perfect because you don't have to read the whole document, you just read it, then wrap it. Okay, also there. If you can, if you want, you can see the person. Okay, good, good. If you do it online, you can, uh, you can, you can add pictures, right? So, uh, do you do mind mapping on paper or electronically? Both. Okay. Some people don't do it. I, I can see some of your faces like, <laughs> what is that? I mean, how, how do you do it? So, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you a short video. And if you have paid attention, uh, I like to show videos first because it's more dynamic rather than just speaking. But I would like you to pay attention to this. It's a TED Talk. Have you ever seen a TED Talk? Yeah. What do you think about TED Talks? Pretty interesting. Okay, some things may be instructional and some things can be fun. Good. Can you identify some of the factors that we are learning in TED Talks? Like for example, like the, the, the last class, 
we learn about how to speak in public, right? So, do you remember that for our last Sunday we have a presentation? Okay, so my recommendation is if you are fun into TED Talks, our last activity will be fun. If you are not so fun on that, well, you need to start practicing. Our last activity is going to be like a TED Talk thing in which you are going to develop a very short speaking activity about a topic that you may find interesting. So it's gonna be related to that in order to practice uh, uh, speaking in public. Got it? So obviously I'm gonna give you some details, but I'm telling you in advance, it has to be like that, you know, like that. A way in which you can engage with the audience and share an interesting topic. What type of, what type of topic can it, can it be? It can be about any related topic for professional development. Okay, so when I'm talking about professional development, remember, it can be about many things. If you, if you pay attention, TED Talks are about that. Like, for example, how to get rid of stress, for example. That's something professional, right? Like tips on how to speak in public. That might be something professional. Also adding to the, to the module that we are there. Tips to become a better student, tips to be uh, more independent or self-taught that you were sharing, right? So some of the things that you may find interesting and engaging, that may be your topic for your tech. You understand exactly? Obviously, it's not going to be like 15 minutes. Normally, that talks last like, like, like 15 minutes. So in our case, it's going to be like 10. Only 10. Seven to ten, seven to ten, seven to ten. Okay? okay. Seven to ten. So I'm gonna show you this TED talk is from a lady that is explaining a little bit about my mapping. My suggestion for this, we have a paper. Do you have paper, paper and pen? No? Yes? Ah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. They understand that my mapping is not only about listening. I mean, it's not only about reading, but it's also about listening. You can apply my mapping basically to study or when you are listening to someone else's presentation. If you have never experienced my mapping, you can do it right now while listening to this TED talk. So this is the activity. I'm going to play the video and you are going to mind map what she's talking about. You understand? So for those who do not know about mind mapping so much, you will be listening to her and practicing. But basically mind mapping starts with putting the main idea in the center and then, you know, like branching or making bubbles, circles, whatever you wanna write to make connections. She will be explaining about this, so you can also be practicing, right? My mapping is functional for uh, studying and also for brainstorming. You are familiarized with that word, right? What's brainstorming? Huh? Very yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, that's in, that's in Spanish. So basically you are arranging everything that comes to your mind and then you try to make connections, right? To organize yourself. Brainstorming, mind mapping in this case, 
will help you to set, for example, the basics for the activity that you're going to develop in our last Sunday. So we're going to practice this as a foundation on how to make presentations as well. Okay? So I'm gonna turn off my camera uh, because I'm gonna share the screen and now I need uh, to have faster video, okay? Also, Alejandra and Giovanni, you should, you should do that as a practice, right? Mind mapping is a method by which you can make notes, take notes, and help your memory because you're working in a way that helps your brain instead of gets in the way. I spent most of my life worrying about whether I was going to remember things. I had parents who had wonderful memories and other people in my family, and mine wasn't. So, I went to college for degrees, including a PhD in mathematics. Obviously, I spent lots of time listening to lectures. I made thousands and thousands of pages of notes. I worried so much that I would forget something that I felt like I had to write everything. But whether you handwrite it, like I did, which ended up with a uh, callus on my finger, or you type it, you're still just transcribing. You're not thinking about what you're hearing or reading. You're not organizing it the way your brain needs to organize it so that it will remember it better. So that you can learn it, store it, and then retrieve it when you want to. And that's really important, being able to retrieve it. So also, when you are writing so fast, typing so fast, you're not paying lots of attention. And all of a sudden, people around me would laugh, and I'd go, what did he say? What did she say? Because I'd missed it. You're not really hearing everything. You can't write as fast as someone speaks. So this is a mind map. This is a handwritten mind map. It's the kind that I recommend to most people to do. It's much better to do them, at least when you're first learning, but even later, with just a plain piece of paper and a pencil or a pen. The idea is that you are doing something very visual. You're also using kinesthetic. You are using your hands, your arms. You're thinking about this whole thing as you're going. You're developing something that starts in the center and builds out radially. So in the center goes the topic. It could be the name of someone you're listening to. It could be the title of a book. It could be a question that you're trying to brainstorm. And then you build out just free form and you only put down what's important to you. So each person's mind map, even of the same talk, of the same book, will be very different. Because what you want to remember, what's important to you, is going to be different than someone else. And that's wonderful. It's very personal. And notice also, you, all, you put down single words or short phrases. This isn't whole sentences or paragraphs. 
Do you think you store in your brain paragraphs? How about sentences? What about those outlines? You know, you spent a lot of time in school, Roman numeral one, A, B, C. Remember that stuff? Do you think that's what you store in your brain? I don't think so. You store images, you store key ideas, you store the connections between the things you're learning and things you already knew. So, shortly after I finished my fourth degree, I learned about this thing called mind mapping. I had never heard of it before. This, as you can see, is a piece of a mind map. In fact, um, it's the part of the mind map of my talk. But there I was learning about it for the first time. And first I felt great regret because boy would that have saved me time and helped me a lot when I was taking notes and trying to learn things and especially getting ready for tests or being able to tell somebody else about what I heard. And then I started to get angry how come I never came across this before? How come nobody had ever shown me this thing called mind mapping? And as I researched it, I found that there were places around the world where things were being talked about in England. Uh, they were doing a lot of it and in Australia, but we hadn't heard very much about it here. And I finally felt very grateful that I had finally, because it works like the brain works. My research published way back in 1975 proved how important the visual and kinesthetic is to people understanding mathematics. And now I had found a tool to apply in all kinds of curricula and all kinds of subjects, not just mathematics. So we need to be able to do something to help our brain, to work with our brain rather than against it. And the way a mind map works, it's compact, it's all on one page. You only write keywords or short phrases, but those trigger words, those key words, trigger for you the bigger idea. So you learn to pay attention to what you're reading or what you're hearing and write down what's most important so it triggers the bigger idea. So later, when you want to think about it and talk about it, you can easily do it. I was attracted because of what it does for academia, but I used it all the years in business too. Every meeting, every meeting with a customer, every sales meeting, every one that you go to. Fantastic way to take notes and to explain it to someone else. So here is how it works. You take a piece of paper horizontally the reason it's horizontal is so that while you're writing and while you're reading, the word, most of the words are facing the way we usually read. By the way, it shouldn't have lines, but if you can't find a piece of paper without lines, then don't worry about it. Just put it horizontal and ignore the lines. Write down key words, write down short phrases, and very important, the connections between these things. You build out radially, so in the center is the topic or the name or the person or the question, and you build out completely free form. Writing, doing your branches and writing what's on it, whatever works for you. And sometimes there was a subject you were paying attention to and writing something on one branch, and suddenly later something else comes up or you think of something, you go back and add it to that branch. Completely free form, again, very personal, the way it works for you. So you can go back to looking at it. You are thinking, you're not blindly documented. You're not blindly transcribing something. You're thinking about how does it fit together, how does it work, and how will I remember it when I need to. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples, and I think it'll help you really understand how this works. And I chose 10 examples because I think you might be familiar with it. The first example I thought I'd share with you is Dan Barber's talk about how I fell in love with a fish. Now here is the way I would have done it the old-fashioned way, right? 
I would have written everything down, line after line, just following what he said. And how would I explain that to someone else? I have to read the whole thing. How would I find a particular point that I wanted to remember? I, again, I have to read the whole thing, just like studying and going back through the, exactly the same things you heard the first time. But here is the mind map of Dan Barber's talk, How I Fell in Love with a Fish. So if you look at the branches here, first, he was a chef, and he served a lot of fish. And he fell in love with a particular fish because he understood it was sustainable. And he did a little more research, and he found out that they were feeding the fish 30% chicken. And he decided, ah, it's not sustainable. And he fell out of love with that fish. So later he tasted a fish that was overcooked and still delicious. He fell in love with fish too. And this fish was so amazing that he even ate the skin, which he said he never did before because it was delicious. And he went to talk to Miguel. Miguel was the person who he understood ran the fish farm. And Miguel said, I don't really run a fish farm. I run a sanctuary for birds, and there are lots of fish there. And I don't have to bring any food for the fish. It's all natural. They just eat what they naturally eat, and the water is clean and everything. So Dan Barber learned a lot about this and learned a lot about agriculture and has recommendations on it. But what was most important about his talk is that I noticed he asked questions, really, really good questions. And it was the questions who gave, that gave him the insights. He asked questions about what is sustainability. He asked the question, how could an overcooked foot fish taste this good? How could a fish that is overcooked taste this good? And then he asked, why do flamingos fly so far for their food? So it was about the questions. They are what helped him understand the whole issue and then be able to share it with us. And you see, a mind map allows me to explain it to you. You can follow what I am saying. Let's do another one. Sir Ken Robinson has done a number of talks. He talked about creativity in schools and claims that schools are killing creativity. And here again is my little hand-done mind map. And I do recommend that when people are first learning them, they do that. But you'll find even later, even after you get really good at it, just grabbing a piece of paper and a pencil that's handy at the moment you want to take notes, you'll do that all the time. You won't have to worry about doing it so in any special form. But of course, when you want other people to read your handwriting, sometimes it's not so good. I admit that. So I do put it sometimes into a computer program, and there are lots of them. And that allows other people to read it as well. So Ken Robinson is the one who talked about creativity in school. And he said that the problem, the good thing about children is that children aren't afraid to be wrong. And so therefore, they're more creative. But we kind of school some of that out of them. He also had some wonderful quotes that I wanted to remember. One of his quotes had to do with the fact that if insects were gone, he said all life would be over. But if humans were gone, the rest of life would flourish. I thought that was pretty good, and I wanted to make sure I remembered it, so it's one of my branches. He also talked ab ab about the uh, use of jokes, and he had lots of jokes in his talk. And there were so many jokes, and I also wanted to keep track of some of them, so I put a branch out there for jokes that I wanted to remember. One of them was, imagine for a moment that you're an English teacher, and you have nine-year-old Shakespeare in your class. How are you going to handle that? Right? So here I have a mind map where I showed what was important to me in his talk. And being able to do that on a mind map allows you 
to be able to pay attention to just what you want, write down just the things that you care about. And there they are ready for you to explain. And he wanted creativity at the top of the pyramid along with literacy. And I'm reminded of that when I look at the mind map. So what about you? Maybe you're feeling a little angry too if you have never heard of this before. Maybe you're thinking you could have been helping your brain all along. Or maybe you knew about this a bit, but never really paid attention and learned to use it. It takes some practice. Anything new that you do takes some practice. So I challenge you now to practice using mind mapping, and you'll really be helping your brain. I have one last little uh, story or anecdote to share with you. And that is that some years ago, I was asked to help my young granddaughter who was not doing well in social studies. And I went over to help her, and I showed her how to mind map. And she mind mapped the chapter about the US government and the next day, she got an A, the first A she'd ever gotten in social studies. It was very exciting. So two days ago, I called her, and I asked her, hey, do you remember that day I came over and showed you mind mapping? And she said, I sure do. We had all these colored pens, and we drew this picture, and I really understood that chapter, and I did very well on the test the next day. And I kept using it in school, especially in high school. So I challenge you, not only for you to practice mind mapping and learn it better, but share it with some others. When you do that, you will internalize it better and be able to use it better. Teach someone else, and especially teach some children to use mind mapping. Thank you. a lot on organizing ourselves to make it more visual, as she said. Okay, so what are some things or some keywords that you got from your mind map? familiarized when she said 
that she was having problems with memory because particularly I'm going through that. The older you get, the less space you have in your brain to store information. So that really uh, that's not good. Any other word? Any other keyword or yes? Yeah. Okay, good. Write it down and share it. Okay? That's what teachers do. Teachers learn better, or te we as teachers learn more once that you, you read, you study, and then you teach it, right? Same. You got it, and then you. Okay. Any other? Yes? Retrieve and learning is Okay. Okay, visual and kinesthetic. You are developing two intelligences visual intelligence and also kinesthetic because you are doing something with your body. Good. You know what I like to say? Three, you get multiple percent of your feet, but we don't really. Like, we can't think what she said, but sometimes we don't talk there. That's what you are saying. You discourage and you complain to other people because you are able to. Yeah, perfect. So retrieve, share. Any other ideas? I have a question in the person. Uh, okay. Examples, right? Do you remember any of the examples? Center, so that person was explaining. It. So this the brain uh, mind mapping also can help me like you did right now when you are listening to something. The other example is the one that she showed, like her own example. Like she said. Exactly. At the beginning, if you pay attention, she was sketching her presentation. And basically, at the beginning, she was developing her speech following the mind map. And then she showed the mind map, and then you could see everything that she was saying was drawn in the map, in the mind map. Okay? So let's pay attention to that. So then you have some, some examples. Now, what I would like you to do as a mind map, okay? We're going to have like a, a couple of, uh, of, of minutes to do this exercise. As a mind map, you're going to prepare a very short presentation. Something pretty short. Imagine that you're going to make a presentation about this. And the topic that you're 
going to develop with your mind map and then you, you're going to work with yourself that you're going to give us each on this is how to create a lesson plan. Got it? So that's the, so that's the topic. How to create a lesson plan? What I mean. Okay, so that's going to that's going to be uh, what you need to focus on your mind map. And remember, it should be a mind map in this case to visualize yourself. Okay. So that's going to be your topic. How to create a mind map. How to make a lesson plan. I'm sorry. How to create a lesson plan. So that's going to be your activity. Mister, can you repeat the last part, please? How to make a lesson plan. That's what you okay. need right now. How to make a lesson plan. Okay. You already know how to do that, right? Okay, great. Think about it. This is going to be your short presentation, let's say. We're going to work on this five minutes.
Okay, so are we ready? So there are many things about, and, and that's what I was checking, and, and I naturally respect how you may do mind maps. Okay. But the easiest way to make it is just to write words, keywords, right? So as she said, sometimes if you remember the uh, complete sentences or paragraphs, that's fine. But because of, uh, because of reasons of space, you're not going to write many things the best would be just to stick to simple words. Got it? Because you may write something. So this is going to be our next activity. You're going to work with another person that you didn't work before. Okay? And you're going to give like a very short presentation based on what you have. Okay? Like a conversation type of thing. Okay. So for this, uh, for this activity, activity but you're going to be talking. I may suggest you if you want to move to another space in the classroom, right? In order to, uh, to isolate the conversation, right? I mean, because if you are too close, probably you may be exposed not to pay attention to what the other one can say. So you're going to take turns, let's say two minutes, yeah, each person, Two minutes each person, and it has to be different from the person that you were working in a couple of minutes before. Okay, so the only exception would be Alejandra and Giovanni because I mean, you cannot move, so you have to be working together. Okay, so in your case, you're going to do the same. Okay, Giovanni and, 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 and Alejandra. The only thing is that I'm going to uh, decrease the volume. So only both of you can listen to you, okay? Would that work? So you can move uh, to another space in the classroom. We have a big classroom, so you have enough space, okay? Good. Two minutes each person, right? <laughs> Hi, Ale. Hello. We are going to share our mind map, right? Ah, uh, yes. And okay. then? I, I didn't like listen the last part. I just heard that we had to like share our like mind map and that's all. I don't know what, what else we are going to do. I heard something about create a different, something different. I heard the word something different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, well, and now we can like just share like yeah. what we have and then we can create like taking into account both of them, yours and mine, okay. I I haven't finished it yet because I had some doubts in the last part, but okay, I'm going to, do you want to start or me? Oh yeah, you can start okay. and then I'm going to be checking if we have like, uh, as you see here, the same you can see here yeah 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 i'll be checking if we have the same okay um, okay. um the topic questions okay we oh it's not about like a my math like about the lesson plan ah <gasps> How to create a how to create a lesson plan 
Like, uh -huh, like the steps. Oh, what never... about the, the, the... Oh, mm -hmm. about the lesson plan. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, I'm going to explain you mine, then you can like get ideas and then we can create one based on that. Okay, okay. Okay. I think that you won't be able to see it, but it like it, I have a, like a disaster right now, but I'm going to try to explain it. Okay? Yeah. Uh, well, in the middle of my like my map, I have obviously that like the topic that is the lesson plan creation or lesson mm -hmm. plan steps here. Mm -hmm. And then I have different branches as the woman mentioned in the title. And I decided to have three. OK, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six six like main branch branches that are like the ones that have like the steps exactly of the mind map. And then in each branch, I have three more branches for each of them, okay? In order to like have three points, three main points in each like step, okay? Well, the first one is, as you know, the objective that is like main, uh, well, the first thing that we have to create in our like lesson plan, we have to have a purpose. And the first one is objective and the fir first uh, objective. And then the first branch or the first point of that branch is purposed because when we have a, an objective in a, our lesson plan is because we have a purpose in order to complete in our class, right? And then we have people. I have people because in the objective, you will have to specify who is going to like uh, be able to, right? In this case, students, that's why I wrote people, but I'm not sure about this one. I, I don't know if you have another idea, we can like, like discuss it later. Or if you want to discuss it right now, in order like to write another thing, like okay, not people. You, yeah, you said people and uh, as I write here. Uh, think about the learning activities. No, it's okay. It's not like people. It's like uh, uh, oh. learning learning objectives about what kind of. I, I don't know if you have in all in other branch uh, the word objectives. Uh, for example, uh, learning objectives can be like, for example, the uh, we may know what learning objectives we need uh, for this class in the, and we can adapt people in this. How can we? I, be... I got it, I don't know if it is like that. Um, well, I understood that we, we can write like learning objectives or, and then have different like the three branches and write like um, the type of, of, of objectives, for example, no, as you mentioned. No, I, I mean that we can add uh, the people the kind of, of people that we oh. are gonna be working on with the objectives. Okay, I got it. So we can like change it that part. I'm going to write another one here, in, uh, like because this one is like a draft. Okay. And okay, uh, the last branch for the first one is how, because we have to explain in the objective how we're going to like develop our work our class, okay? As soon as we'll be able to remember five words together, but we had to like specify how they are going to do it, okay? Mm -hmm. So I have purpose, people, and how. And the main like branch, branch is objective. And then we have the warm up that you know, that is like then the first oh. part, the warm up, and have the warm up here as the second branch. And then we ha I have three points for this one. The first one is introduction. Because in the warm up, you like introduce yourself, you say hello, good morning, how are you, la la la, and everything. But you have the introduction yeah. to the class. And then the second one, I wrote brainstorming. Because as you know, when we are going to start a class, we always tend to like uh, ask students, what do you remember about the last class? Or do you have an idea about this topic? Or what do oh, you know about yeah, like, yeah, because right? sometimes we we look for a mind map that uh, match with the topic, and then That's true. Uh, the 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 brain idea comes, uh, and then yeah. they start thinking about what is the topic about, and yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's so. That's why I, I oh, brainstorming because it's we always do as the teachers at the beginning of the class, and then as a third point of warm up, I have feedback. Because after I like, have the brainstorming, teachers tend to do okay. Now that you already um, 
have an idea about that topic. We're going to remember about last class. Do you know that we were discussing about this and this and this? Mm -hmm. We need to like take into account that and everything. So I have introduction, brainstorming, and then feedback. Yeah, feedback. Feedback, but about uh, a pre uh, feedback uh, about previous class. Okay. Mm -hmm. Previous class. Okay. And then I don't know if you want to add or to change something for warm up or it is no okay warm up is okay. Okay, good. Then I have presentation because we have that three P, PPP, right? Uh, presentation, practice, and production. So in presentation, I have topic introduction because obviously when we start like doing the presentation, we present like the name of the topic or a picture. Do you remember the lesson plans that we were, oh, okay, we're going to be talking about the, the weather. Yeah, and, and everything. So topic introduction is the first part that we do in presentation, present a topic and what it's going to be about. After the topic introduction, I have explanation because I remember what well, the majority of us and do the lab during the, 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 the what, the practice, it's the practices, practice. that, the digital yeah. practice. And I remember that we present like just the topic with a picture. In my case, I always like to like, write the topic or just present pictures, right? In order to do this topic. And then I remember that I started explaining, okay, so the topic for today is like the weather and then to show many pictures. And then after that, okay, now we are going to uh, learn what is the weather and what are the parts of the weather, how it is like, um, called, let's say. Um, Winter, summer, the different yeah. stations. Uh -huh, yeah. That and like the vocabulary and everything. So that's yeah. why I, I have explanation because we always explain the topic introduction. Yeah. And as in the third point, I have discussion. Okay, I'm gonna so, get started. Okay. Go back to your seats, please. Okay. Thanks, Alejandro. Okay, we're gonna be back to our Espero seats. Nos ayude. Go back to our seats. Okay, so thank you so much for the conversation. I heard you were like developing uh, this very short moment of speaking uh, and you were clearly organized oh, uh, with what you wanted to say, right? Okay. So let's, some some thoughts about, about the le about lesson plan. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I do, I forgot that I have my like mic on and I was saying that I am really hungry and that I want to go up to go and get something. Oh, it's okay, don't worry. I mean, it was not something bad. I mean, so you, I mean, you can go grab something. We are about to have a break though. Five yeah, like in five minutes. Uh, so this happened to me once. I was supervising a class and you know, I got home and you know, like when you get home, I mean, you try to feel comfortable. So when I got home, you know, I, I usually wear a, a baseball hat. Yeah, so I'm all the time wearing baseball hats. And then I, I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna supervise classes. So I got into the teacher's room and I forgot that I had the mic, uh, that I had the camera on. And I was, you know, eating churritos with my cap like that. And I was just like checking the class, you know, eating churritos and with my, and with my cap like this, you know, like, like watching a movie. So I was like, and taking notes, you know, eating churritos. Then the teacher texted me and said, teacher, you have your camera on. And when she told me that, you know, I just put it, I mean, turn it off. 
And then I was like so ashamed because like, all, all, all the te all the students were looking at me that I was eating churritos, you know, and with my and with my and, and with my uh, my baseball hat too. So I mean, don't worry. You didn't say anything bad. I had so don't worry about it. So some of you had similar ideas with your um, with your mind map, right? Did you find any other differences? You know, like in, in elements or components inside the mind map. Okay. So, for example, which which were some of the some of the differences that you, that you had? Sunday number four, okay? So that means that, for example, you are still having more time to do the research, okay? So you still have time. Uh, well, I'm gonna talk to the groups uh, uh, in prior. Uh, so, so next month, next Sunday, no class. So there is no class because it's Labor Day. And I asked Mr. Peña about it and he replied like a week ago. No, less than that, <laughs> this week, and he confirmed. Yeah, Mr. Peña is a very busy man. So, uh, so sometimes he takes some, some, some minutes to reply or some, or some days or weeks. <laughs> some, or, or some weeks, but he replied, he replied. <laughs> 
or, or Chibatini flies. I know, you know, being a coordinator is really expressed out. Yeah, and I totally understand there are just many things to do. And I don't know, I don't know. And he's in charge of, 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 of making groups with you too and replying and everything. So, yeah, I'm really glad that he shared with you also the class that we were needing because I didn't know until yesterday. So, so I already have the copies. I have to acknowledge Brenda <laughs> for, for providing the copy. I didn't bring any. So I'm gonna be taking notes, but this is gonna this is gonna be for me to uh, to write comments. John Gray is going to be in the platform, okay? So I'm gonna be giving you feedback in the platform. So I will create a uh, I will create an assignment called presentation. I don't really know if I can do. Do your professors uh, include rubrics in in the platform? Yes or no? Yes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna type because I haven't checked. My platform is it's different. Uh, so the, the platform that I usually use is different. So I don't know if, 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 if there is that option. So I'm gonna blow the rubric. I'm gonna make the points and get and you're going to get the grade there. Okay. But this one is just for me to write notes because I may forget. So I'm gonna be taking notes that where I'm, I'm not gonna give them to you. Yours is gonna be electronic. Okay, so as you could see, there are uh, different sections. There are five sections. One is called nonverbal communication, that basically is talking about nervousness, right? Basically, it's just the way you naturally approach uh, this this moment in your life, right? That you're going to speak and then you're going to share. Also, it's also limited to uh, uh, your body, how you. How to speak to your body. Obviously, I'm not telling you that you're going to be dancing, right? So it's <laughs> you're going to be. No, I mean, it's, it's because remember that there are times that when people present, they go. I mean, I'm talking just being natural, naturally speaking. So that's the first one. I just wanted to make sure that you know about it. That's what is called non verbal communication. Right, yeah, like contact, uh, etc. Obviously, I'm uh, going to get have this test for you. As you know, uh, for this moment, you are going to be presenting in about one minute, right? And obviously, you're going to speak to everybody. I already have some papers over here. So remember that you need to brainstorm me. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna leave it up here. You can find it in my family that you have to I mean you're gonna be in the paper now so you can do brainstorming and uh I'm gonna go with over here in case that you that you need some guidance right but it's gonna be something quick right so you're going to see the question in the screen Okay, so as you could see a couple of minutes ago, I have like a spin wheel with your name. So I'm gonna spin that wheel. You see your name, and after that, I'm gonna switch the screen, and you are going to see the the specific um the specific topic. So remember to have to read it, to do brainstorming, and then I will I will do. Uh, I'll check the, the real performance over here. You know, the second one is vocalics that basically is about your tone of voice. That you speak clear, that your volume is okay, that it's not loud, that it's not soft. Okay? Uh, so basically that's vocalics, then the content, if you are able to provide uh, the necessary information related to the issue, right? What are the what is the content or what is the issue? Some of them may be related to a specific uh, things in education, for example, technology, and kids. I'm doing just brain a, 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 a quick brief so you can be familiarized, for example, with the with the with the vocabulary. 
is not is not nothing about science scientists and what do you think about uh, DNA and stuff? No, I mean that's I mean normal topics. Right identification. Uh, there is one related to uh, jobs. Like for example, you think about jobs that is really demanding, etc., etc., etc. Things like those. Uh, but it's vocabulary that you understand. Okay. There are some questions that I want you to be careful that it says explain or talk about the benefits or advantages or disadvantages. But remember, because it is one minute, you can provide examples. That, that's what you have. You're going to have 30 seconds. So I'm going to time it up. The 30 seconds, so I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it with my phone. I have my phone. I'm going to set 30 seconds. And then I'm going to say time, and then you get ready, and then you explain one minute, and then that's it. Okay? Also, and I will try to do it. Um, I'm just going to say stop. And that's it. Right? If you want to get your phone and you want to change your time, you can give it over to YouTube. Right? So you can be around and uh, have your paper and your phone over here as hell. Just to just to check the time, yeah. Can give it over. Okay, you can put the time. So remember, and I don't think that anyone is going to fail, right? So don't feel nervous about it. You already know the persons that content is there. Remember, it's just to evaluate your speaking, right? And your voice. That's the, that's the the other criteria is called continuity, continuity, yeah, it's continuity. It's continuity. That basically is about how natural your speaking is without making pauses. Like for example, say uh, 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 small test. It has to be natural. Okay. So every time that, for example, you can, you may be listening to yourself doing that, make a pose and then try to continue, right? So try not to make too many poses or these, these things, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, 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 you know, you know. All that, I mean, you have to avoid making Because it's a normal speaking, try to avoid that and the time. Then the 25 seconds, between 25 and 55, and we give the other one exactly one minute. So if you have your timer with you over here, and then you know it's around 59, then you yeah. questions. Are you excited? Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> so we're going to do this. Uh, so every person is going to employ one minute in a half. So that will take us like around 45 minutes. After that, uh, we are going, if we have time, and I hope that we can have some time. Uh, no, it's going to be less than, less than 45 minutes. We're going to meet, it, I'm going to meet each group quickly if you have any question regarding your, uh, your research project. Okay, good. So for the people who are at home, it would be the same procedure. You're going to keep your phone. You're gonna keep track of your time. You also need to get a piece of paper to brainstorm and so on. Are you ready? Yay. Yes. Okay. Good. Perfect. Okay. So your names are already there. I just need to. I just need to. I need to open the. 
So as I said, we're having a one minute presentation. Let's see if I can do it. We're having a one minute presentation. And first, uh, I'm going to choose the name. We're going to choose the, the first name of the person. So it's Giovanni. <laughs> Okay, Giovanni, you're the lucky one. Okay. okay. So, you're watching the screen, Giovanni? Sorry? Are you watching the screen? Yeah. Okay, you're watching the screen. Okay, perfect. We're watching you too. So, so this is going to be uh, your topic. You see it? So you have, yes, I can. you have 30 seconds to prepare. Starting now. Okay, Giovanni, time is over. You can start your minute and start right up. <laughs> okay, well, I consider myself as a, as a person who likes to take risks. As for example, come here to Europe is a big challenge because of the language, but uh, almost all the people speak German. And uh, well, I said, that won't be a problem. I'm good at English. And I know that uh, uh, lingua franca works. And that's why I take, I took the risk and I came to this place and I'm trying to do my best to communicate at restaurants, at the uh, theaters, at, uh, while taking the train. And um, yeah, I consider my, myself as a person who likes to take risk and uh, I do not avoid uh, uh, danger, because uh, I ha had a lot of experience uh, during the, my life. Um, also, my the ones who know who who know me uh, know that uh, I am a person who works in a factory, and uh, I I'm not afraid of uh, danger. And uh, I don't know if that the minute passed. Okay, good. That's all. Thank you so much. A clap for you. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> you were nervous, right? <laughs> yeah, we can see that you were a little bit nervous. Yeah, but general really well. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Now we're going to switch it into person number two. And our person number two is going to be. Ita, come to stage. Come to stage. I was going to say it's very pleasing. Okay, Ita. 
So give me a second. I think I'm going to give you 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. I'm going to write. Okay. So 30 seconds. You have 30 seconds to prepare yourself. And this is the your question. Okay, so your 30 seconds start right now. Okay, perfect. Now you, your minute starts right now. So, um, in my case, I have had just bosses that are not strict. And while being a strict boss has advantages and disadvantages. I, let's just start with the advantages is that you feel more committed to, the, to do your job, you are more responsible because you know that person is going to, if you fail, then you're not going to have a good comment about it. And, but being a, a strict boss, it also has their disadvantages. For example, if I have a strict boss, if I need, for example, I need to go to the hospital or if I need to do something else or I have something personal going on, I would rather lie and not tell the truth because if I tell the truth, then I they, are, they might say, no, you cannot go, you may not go. I have had some, as, as I said before, I have had okay. some. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. A lot of Thank you. I know, and you gotta be very careful with that. Remember, you only have one minute, right? You only have one minute. Probably you may need more, but just try to be careful with the, with the amount of time. Okay, good. So you see, we're doing this very quickly. Thank you so much for your participation. Now we're going to go for the next one. I want to have this. Huh? I don't know. It wasn't the best. No. <laughs> Thank you. 
everything yeah we can see you we can okay see you. so uh, it will be yours mm. okay there is a to check Okay, Alejandra, you can start right now. Okay, uh, it is obvious, right, that like life has changed a lot during the years. Now we have like many other like fans, machines and everything. Um, it is possible that uh, robots will like completely replace um, us in future. In my opinion, yes, I think, because if you see, we actually we have robots right now. Maybe they don't, they, they are not like doing uh, like, exactly the things that we do sorry for the alarm and so uh, the reasons technology has improved a lot during the the past years and it is still improving so that's why i think we are going to have many robots in our life it will be a, a disaster in some cases because maybe they are going to do our work and we won't have the opportunity to work like in machines or maybe in factories and everything but um we can like uh, ask, like for example, to have a like, robots for exact exactly or like a specific things, for example, at home and everything. I'm but sorry. it is obvious that we are going to have robots in future. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I clap for, for her. Thank you. Alejandra. Okay, Alejandra, you can start right now. So, I 
because I guess and I guess it's not here, right? Alejandra Don. Okay, you you are done, right? Your band is done. You have Brenda. Oh, your your dates are here, right? Yes, right? Yes. Okay. Well, Natalie is not here. It is that, yes. Okay, so we're gonna write Natalie a little bit too. Mister. Yes. Uh, she called me because she has problems at home. That's why she's not like in the class. She's here in the United States as well, but she's having some problems, personal problems as well. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So we're gonna take a look at uh, generate the names again. Okay. Good. Yes. So we're having the last. <laughs> okay, Nixon. Right. It's your turn. Y el timer is at even, pero te, pero, o sea, hay que dejar esto. Okay, so Nixon, read your question. Oh, sorry. No, okay, good. Okay, you can start right now. All right, so uh, we know that uh, television is something that really helps a lot of people. Uh, sometimes it goes with your stretch, it goes with uh, uh, extra time, but it's like to watch a TV series. Or, but in the case of children, uh, it's very important for us to know what type of information they are going to be uh, uh, getting for the television. If it's a series, a movie, uh, in this case, well, I have a daughter, and I personally like to uh, put some TV shows that are very educational. In this case, uh, TV shows that have music where she can learn vocabulary, where she can learn how to talk to uh, other kids, uh, TV shows that teach her the fundamental things that she needs to learn to be able to communicate uh, with other kids and also be respectful to adults. So in this case, I think it's very important for us to uh, really understand what type of programs we need to teach uh, our students. I'm sorry, our children. Okay, good to clap for him. Good. Can we just say students, or you know, in general, yes, sure. so, some songs, some are like like kids. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good. So how old is your daughter? Do you, you have a daughter? I have a daughter. She's. Uh, She's about to be three years old. She's learning how to talk, and the thing is that I actually uh, talk to her in English, and because everybody else talks to her in Spanish, so I want her to go okay. Okay. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Like, for example, my girlfriend and my girlfriend is bilingual too. She speaks English like really, really nice, and we say, you know, when we get kids. I mean, we're going to speak in both languages here in the house. So, it, it helps them develop the brain a lot better. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and you keep on doing that. You, you, you ought to put that in English. Teach your kids how to do that. Okay, then we have our next. Next one again. <laughs> David, okay. You're ready, David? Oh. <laughs> no, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think for us too. 
<laughs> okay, so this this is your question. Okay, thirty seconds to brainstorm now. Okay, so you can start uh, your minute now. So, 
I work with Naim, but I think that is not there. And also with Natalie, that is here as well. Okay, perfect. Good. But uh, I want to, but I want to talk with you about it. I don't know if I like stayed at the end of the class or. Okay, probably you can, you can stay at the end. So I'm gonna mute it and I'm gonna stop recording right now. And just stick there. As soon as I finish with the rest of the uh, of the groups, 
the role you can compile. I'm gonna let you know in the chat, okay? Thank you. Good. So, and Giovanni, I mean, you are dismissed if you want, uh, so you don't wait. So I can talk with the, with the rest of the group, okay? So, I'm gonna stop recording.